Blog Talk Radio. Did you really carry me when I was asleep? Did you try to defend me when I was asleep? Did you pick me up that lonely night when the lights died out and I turned to the gray side? Did you carry me? Greetings and salutations, Hempsters. This is your host, Tyler Hoff, otherwise known as Tyler Hemp. It's another beautiful day here in Southern California. This is Hemp Aware Radio, and we are having an amazing hemp episode planned for today. Our special guest is the creator of the Hemp Hut, and he has an organization called Hemp for Humanity. Uh, a mutual friend of ours, Eric Hempseed Lloyds, connected us. And uh, thank you so much, Eric. And I'm so excited to have him on the show today. I hear he's full of hemp educational material. So before we get started, today's show is entitled The Benefits of Cannabis Hemp. There are so many directions we could go with this. And honestly, we could have a radio station that is. Uh, simply dedicated to just sharing the benefits of hemp because the list is so substantial. So if you didn't know already, there was an article published in the 1938 Popular Mechanics magazine uh, stating that hemp can be used to produce more than 25,000 products ranging from dynamite to cellophane. So that was in the 30s, folks. 1938 Popular Mechanics magazine is stating that there's 25,000 products. So I still haven't seen the whole list. However, we sure are working on creating it. And if you go to hempaware.com and visit the Hemp 101 section, you will see all the different uses that we've come up with so far. And um, feel free to email us, call us, send in your... uh, your suggestions or your ideas on what else could be made of hemp. And as a matter of fact, I believe that our friend David Pillar, who's on the line with us today, has a hemp sink. So uh, let's see if he's on the line. David, are you with us? Yeah, hi, Tyler. Thanks for having me awesome. today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the show. And um, David is going to help us continue adding to that never-ending list of the benefits and uses of, of the cannabis, cannabis hemp plant. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, David. I know you're doing such great work in the hemp movement, and uh, you're always at different events and educating and raising awareness, lobbying, getting signatures for the different laws that are um, you know, trying to be enacted and passed. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I really appreciate you, bro. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for all that you're doing to raise awareness as well. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I know uh, it's why I'm here on planet Earth is to empower and hemp educate your hemisphere or, you know, as many people as possible so that we can experience a paradigm shift on this planet and we can experience peace in our, our minds and, and love in our hearts and uh, be able to experience it tangibly. So I'm curious, how long have you been involved with or known about the benefits of hemp, David? Um, I've known about hemp for about 22 years now. Uh, first wow. Learned about it. Yeah. yeah, I first learned about it when I was going to college at the University of Arizona back in 1991. Very well, that cool. That was my so- first um, introduction to the topic, and it's it's only been uh, in the last six years where I've been more dedicated on uh, just the hemp movement itself. Um, 
you know, of course, since I first learned about it, definitely took advantage of different opportunities to educate friends, family, coworkers, whatever, about him. But it's uh, just been about a six-year journey of really um, committing myself to doing what I can to, to take this ball across the finish line and, and help us co-create a more helpful future. Beautiful. Well, thank you. So what are some of the ways that you consume or use industrial hemp on a daily basis? Well, uh, on a daily basis, I wear hemp clothing. Um, I, mm-hmm. On a daily basis, I, I clean my body with hemp soap and wash my, and condition my hair with hemp shampoos and conditioners um, mm-hmm. or hemp foods in the diet whether hemp seed or hemp oil. So I use uh, I use them pretty consistently. Very cool. So uh, one of the questions I like to ask our, our special guests is, if there were one or two things that our listeners could do today to help move this, this um, legalization forward for the growth of industrial hemp, in the United States, what would you recommend that our listeners uh, do today to take action to help legalize hemp? Well, the first thing I would suggest people do is visit VoteHemp.com. VoteHemp is the only group in Washington, D.C., focused specifically on the industrial hemp issue. And they have done a remarkable job over the years of building a platform that enables people, one, to find out what is the latest at the federal level and state level on various hemp legislation. And they also enable people to take that a step further and actually contact their senators, their representatives, and become engaged in the democratic process. Um, Right now there's a bill in both the Senate and the House called the Industrial Hemp Farming Act that is one of the most straightforward pieces of legislation our Congress has ever seen. And I would highly recommend that any hempster out there, any engaged citizen who wants to create a better future for ourselves and future generations, that they make it known whether it's via an email or a phone call. They need to let their senators and representatives know that they want them to co-sponsor the Industrial Hemp Farming Act. It's, Perfect. So they can... Um, uh, they can go to votehemp.com, check out your local representative, find out their phone number. Uh, there's forms on votehemp.com, I believe, that will help you to draft a letter. You can customize it, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a consumer, whether you're into politics, whether you're into the environment, whether you're into health and wellness. No matter what it is that you are dedicated and committed about, hemp can be integrated into your life. It can improve the quality and the integrity of what you have to offer, the services, the products that you have to offer. So thank you so much, David. Um, now my yeah. other question and is... Beyond, the, mm-hmm. beyond having people um, contact their senators and representatives from Boat Hemp about the federal issue, they can also find out what is going on in their state. Uh, this year alone, there have been over 20 states that have introduced uh, hemp legislation. Some, like Kentucky, have already passed legislation to restore hemp to their farmers. And so what we need people to do is also, in addition to the federal level, bring it to the grassroots, bring it to the state level, and make sure that your, your local and state representatives are made aware about industrial hemp. If there's a bill pending, let them know that you expect to see their support. And if there's not a bill already pending, um, help initiate some grassroots action to get a bill introduced. Exactly. 
Okay, so if, check out your your state, your city, you know, who in your area is supporting hemp. Um, another thing we can do always is to support organizations like uh, hempforhumanity.org, which is David Pillar's uh, organization to help continually raise awareness about hemp and take action in legalizing it so we can start benefiting from it as a society, as a country, as a nation, as, you know, this whole planet. Um, David, the subject of our show today is the benefits of cannabis hemp. Now, we both know that this list is endless and that we could have a radio station just dedicated to the benefits of industrial hemp. But I'm curious, what are some of your favorite benefits or some of the benefits and uses of hemp that you like to let people know about that are easy to consume or uh, just, you know, a really great um, commodity or material or finished product that you think will bring a lot of value to our society? What are some of your favorite benefits or uses of industrial hemp? Well, that's a really good question. And like you said, uh, this list is pretty much endless as to the benefits that hemp can provide. Um, I would have to say, though, that I firmly believe that the biggest benefit hemp provides is that it enables us to actually build a sustainable future. I think when you when you look around at the, the health of the planet, um, you see that we are in serious need of some healing agents for our land, for our air, for our water. And that's, to me, um, one of the biggest benefits of hemp. I was a, a tree hugger before I was a hemp hugger. And, uh-huh. you know, if you, if you look at the health of the oceans, for instance, you know, the, the oceans are, are dying in a lot of places. And the reason they're dying in a lot of places is because of agricultural runoff, of uh, pesticides. Right an herbicide that have made their way from our, our ground into our water tables, into our streams, into our rivers, and into our oceans. And to help heal the oceans, we need to shift what we're doing on the land. And hemp is a crop that can be grown without the extensive use of pesticides. is an enormous uh positive thing that we can do to help heal our oceans. And, you know, we're on that same line. It's like our air is extremely polluted right now. And if, you, if you've been paying attention to the news, uh, you know that just in the last month or so, we have passed a 400 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere. And our wow. scientists tell us that 350 parts per million is a safe level for us to be able to sustain life. So we're well beyond a safe level. And what we need to do is to bring that carbon and put it into the ground and help to convert that carbon into oxygen to to clean the air and make our life more habitable on the planet. And that kind of uh, steers me into one of my favorite uses. Um, I think one of the uses that excites me the most is industrial hemp for use as a building material. Um, Me too. And I know that that's something that a lot of people are not as aware of, but hempcrete, as it's called, is – a building material that, one, it sequesters. It's, let me just back up. Hempcrete is a mixture of hemp, lime, and water that can you, you can use for building homes, building, doing buildings. Um, you, there's probably no limit to the type of construction applications you can use from it. But when mm-hmm. you build a home or a commercial building with it, you are sequestering carbon in the walls of that building. And so that helps to bring down the carbon in the atmosphere. And 
besides the biomatter that goes into the wall, because of the lime in the mixture, you're taking carbon out of the atmosphere the entire life of those house, those walls, which is huge. Wow. So not only the actual plant itself as it's growing is cleaning our environment, but you're saying the actual finished product of a home is going to contribute to a, a fresher, cleaner, more organic environment. Exactly, exactly. And, and the benefits beyond the carbon sequestration of building a house with hempcrete is you're creating a clean air environment for the people in your house. You know, there's, there's a serious epidemic. I don't know if it qualifies as an epidemic, but, you know, sick building syndrome, if you've heard of yeah. that, is something that affects the health of people all across this country and around the world. Because well, the it, way makes, we... it, makes, mm-hmm, it makes sense. We've got plaster, drywall that easily molds. We've got heavy metal-laden paints, you know, with lead, all the formaldehyde and different toxic glues that they're using in subflooring and in, in, in carpeting. It's true. I believe it is an epidemic, and I'm very much committed and dedicated to empowering the world with these industrial applications, especially construction. So we're going to go to a commercial break here, and we will be right back with our dear friend David Piller. Have you visited BullKempWarehouse.com today? Discover dozens of BullKemp products for great prices. Hemp seeds for your salads and smoothies, custom tailored hemp clothing for your profession, hemp fabrics, hemp foods, along with hemp body care goods and tons of other great items. Visit BulkHempWarehouse.com today to get the best prices and a huge variety of healthy hemp goods for you and your family. Hemp protein, hemp oils, hemp yarn, hemp books, and raw hemp fibers. Connect with us today and tell us what your project is and how we can help integrate hemp seamlessly. Just visit BulkHempWarehouse.com today. Welcome back. This is your host, Tyler Hemp with Hemp Aware Radio. We have a special guest on the line with us today, David Piller. And David, where are you based out of? Oregon? Um, actually, right now I'm based out of the Bay Area in Oakland, California. Okay, very cool. And where can people go to find uh, more information about your projects and, and to support you and what you're doing to educate the planet? Well, right now I'm a little bit in between projects. Um, earlier this year I did a college tour called the Hemp History Week College Roadshow, and that is a project that people can find out about by uh, visiting hemphistoryweek.com. They can learn more about that campaign, and if they're on Facebook, they can vis- join and like uh, Hemp. History Week College Roadshow. Um, it's a tour. Wonderful. I, I did uh, traveling from, started off in Colorado, and I, I visited campuses throughout the, the Midwest, Southwest, and the West Coast. So that's uh, awesome. the latest thing for me. Very cool. So Hemp History Week, uh and and the college road show, are you going to be picking that back up anytime soon or, or next next year or what what's your plan for the college hemp uh, road show? Um, those plans are are still in development. Uh, definitely something I I want to do again. It just remains to be seen whether I will be doing a uh, a tour in the fall or in the spring. Um, those things are, are still in development right now. Well, I would just say that, um, you know, last year uh, we we had uh, Hemp History Week is a national grassroots campaign that this year is celebrated its fourth annual. And were you already uh, were you part of Hemp History Week this year? Yes, actually were I went commit- up to the, pre- the premiere broadcast of Bringing It Home, which is a fantastic documentary about 
industrial hemp, growing it here in the U.S., as well as building it um, and using it for building materials. So, yeah, um, myself and my beautiful hempress and my dear friend Eric Hempseed Lois, we all went to the premiere broadcast of Bringing It Home up in Hollywood, and uh, we got to touch shoulders with some awesome hemp heads, uh, Steve Levine from Hemp Industries Association and uh, David Bronner and, and Michael Bronner and all kinds of really great, you know, hemp entrepreneurs. So it was a blessing to be able to connect with, with people like that and know that we're all working together on this movement to to change uh, the perspective of, of, of our government, uh, which we are our government. So the more we, um, you know, work together and, and communicate and spread the word, we're going to make the changes. So we're doing it. Yeah, act, absolutely. And, you know, Hemp History Week, um, the thing I love about it is, that it is a, a focused week of trying to really turn up the volume of, one, hemp awareness around this country. I mean, those, those parts of our history here in the United States that are so interlinked with hemp, yet there are things that we are not exposed to or taught when we're going through a public school system, you know, whether you're talking about Bessie Ross and hemp flag or the covered wagons that came out west that were covered in hemp or you name it, you know, these are, we learn all about cotton, don't we? <laughs> you know, we learn about the great story of cotton and the cotton gin and, ooh, yay, cotton, but we don't hear anything about this remarkable plant called hemp that, you know, really helped lay the foundation for uh, this country to even grow and thrive from the beginning of its inception. Exactly. I mean, isn't it true that several of the United States presidents were actually hemp farmers? Yeah. Um, the three that I know of are... Uh, our founding father George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams. And, uh, you know, I guess if you go to Mount Vernon today, uh, you can actually uh, take a tour of uh, George Washington's farm, and they'll even talk about the hemp that used to be grown there. Right. I mean, it's it's so ingrained and, and woven into the fabric of United States history that it is literally, I believe, an absurdity that we're not teaching about it in our schools, like you said. So that that is um, absolutely. Yeah. So that's yeah. So our college a, campuses, our college campuses have traditionally been the launching pads for movements. You know, whether you're looking at the civil rights act in, in various pieces of environmental legislation that were passed in the 70s, the Vietnam movement, et cetera, they started in a lot of different places, but it was when college students got fired up about an issue that the things were taken to another level. And I believe that all across this country, our college-age students have a right to know about hemp. They have a right to know that there's a crop that's been cultivated by humankind for over 10,000 years that we in the United States are being kept from being able to cultivate, grow, and fully pursue um, those product categories like you mentioned earlier. Right. Well, <clears throat> you're you're right on with that. I believe, too, that the more uh, students and college students and even elementary, junior high, and high school students, if we can somehow – inspire them or inspire the teachers and the administration to see the benefit and the value of industrial non-psychoactive varieties of cannabis that this is literally going to transform our planet. It's going to change the way that we treat each other, the way we do business, and um, I agree. So we only have about five minutes left, and I wanted to ask you a, a, a big question, David. Um, just to finish up our show here today, and you can expound upon it as much as you'd like. But my question for you is, what is your ultimate goal and or vision for hemp in your life and in the world? Wow. 
That is a very good question. Um, my ultimate goal is to improve the the quality of life of, of people in this country and around the world. And I really believe that industrial hemp is foundational to the betterment of the quality of life of people everywhere. Um, if you look here in the United States, it's obvious that we have a serious health epidemic with diabetes and obesity, to name just two. And part of that is because of the industrial agricultural model and the food that we are, our citizens are eating. And hemp is one of the healthiest foods on the planet is necessary to turn our health around. Um, I, my ultimate goal is to help regenerate and revitalize our overworked soils and to help our communities thrive with materials that are grown close to site, processed close to site, where we revitalize our rural communities and we revitalize our, our native communities. I think that we in this country have a big gaping wound uh, in our relations with the native people that were here before our settlers first arrived. And I think one of the best ways that we can heal that wound is to bring him back and have projects that are bringing hemp cultivation to the reservations, bringing hemp processing and industries to the reservations. Um, ultimately, my big goal is to make it possible for farmers all across this country and around the world to grow hemp in, in their communities, to make whatever hemp uh, products they want to make in their communities, and to help heal our air, our soil, our water, and our bodies. Amen. That is a beautiful vision, and I am right on board with you on that vision because I believe, too, that hemp is the number one solution to rest, uh, to restore our health crisis, our environmental crisis, our financial crisis, our water crisis and um, our war crisis. This, you know, the fact that we're just going to war for stupid reasons and that it's unnecessary. We can live in harmony. We can live in peace. And I believe that restoring the growth of hemp in the U.S. is going to be a pinnacle uh, turning point for humanity. And I, I am very thankful that Germany and France and England and Austria and Spain and all these industrialized nations are currently growing hemp, and I thank them for being the leaders. And hopefully, uh, you know, the young little uh, United States nation will wake up to their older, you know, to, to its older um, siblings, so to speak, all these other nations that are, are leading the way. You know, even Canada, look at our borderline with Canada, and they're thriving. They've got an amazing hemp economy going on. So I'm, uh, I'm so thankful to have David on the show with us, um, and, and what, a, what a privilege and an honor to be working with somebody that's so dedicated to, um, you know, empowering and, and educating as many people as possible. And thank you so much for sharing your vision with us today. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on the show again sometime, David. That would be great. Thanks so much for uh, for having me today. Thanks for all the listeners tuning in. And uh, be sure and visit VoteHemp.com. We've got an incredible opportunity in this off election year to really take this ball to Congress and demand action and help open the door to a hempful future, which is that hopeful future for all of us. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to Hemp Aware Radio. This is your host, Tyler Hemp, and we will be broadcasting every Tuesday, 11 a.m. You can visit all of the archived shows on the podcast um, podcasts on the iTunes um, platform. You can also visit blogtalkradio.com forward slash hempaware, or you can visit hempaware.com to get hemp educated. We love you so much. Have a blessed day. <laughs>